Okay, so then this is if you were here last semester. Yep. So the more pos, the more equals positive, the less equals negative. Yeah. So what we see here with the membrane potential. So if you're going from this side, this means the inside of the cell is getting more positive. If you're going toward this direction, the inside of the cell is getting more negative and has more negative ions than or is relatively negative compared to the outside. So this is why I like to think of memory potential like the electric charge inside a cell. Again, very inexact, but it's referring to the balance of these positive and negative ions. So at rest, this is why you have in a, now this is in neurons. This is not in muscle cells. A neuron at rest has more overall negative charge than its surroundings. So that's why I showed that previous slide. Now pacemaker cells, they still involve membrane potential and you do see a little crest toward the positive side so you notice that the charge inside the cell is getting more positive and then it drops off again. So if you remember the terms depolarization, repolarization, that comes back into play with cardiac cells. So it is slightly different in overall shape and actually especially this part we call prepotential, that is something that does not happen in neurons. So this is where you have to be kind of careful. Not only are you learning action potentials again, this is a different flavor of action potentials. So action potentials, they have the same overall shape if it's in the same type of cell. Now, what are things, the thing is that what I really want to emphasize, cardiac muscle action potentials are different from neuron action potentials. And the thing is that the cardiac muscle can actually, especially these pacemaker cells, they do not need neurons to contract. Like remember, if, if you remember your motor units, you have motor neurons and they, and they innervate motor, these skeletal muscle fibers, and these motor neurons tell these skeletal muscle fibers to contract. But cardiac muscle, if you have the pacemaker cell, it doesn't need these neurons. And the thing is that, I want to emphasize this again, the cardiac conduction system is not neurons, it's these special cardiomyocytes. Okay, so the ion, this is where you now are you starting completely from square one if you were here last semester. The good thing is that the ions are still the same inside and out. You still have more potassium on the inside, the banana is still there, and you still have more sodium chloride on the outside, the ocean is still salty, and you still have more calcium on the outside. And this calcium, why do I bring it up? Because calcium is actually very, very important to muscle cell function, especially cardiac muscle. So if you already had this in your mind, you're set. So this, you don't have to relearn this part. Calcium is very important in the cardiac muscle action potentials. Now what we have here is action potentials and things that pacemaker cells can contract by themselves. And remember, like we saw with those beating hearts, we saw with those, that, that Petri dish full of, or these wells full of beating cells, these pacemaker cells, they can initiate their own contraction. Now, they can reach a threshold potential by themselves. If you remember from neuronal action potentials, the neurons need some sort of stimulus. They need something to push themselves toward this value we call threshold. So the threshold is like a little minimum, it's, or it's kind of like a minimum a cell has to reach before it does this action potential. So this is the action potential here, and this is the action potential here. In the neuron, it would stay like that until something stimulates it. But this is a cool thing about pacemaker cells. They generate this by themselves. So this is what we call a prepotential. A pacemaker cell can push itself to the large threshold, firing off an action potential, and then push itself back to threshold again. So this is why pacemaker cells can initiate action potentials and cause contraction without needing additional stimuli. So this is what we call a threshold potential. So again, it's like a hurdle you must reach before you can do this depolarization that starts off an action potential. Now, how do you do that? It's like, well, it can start itself, but how the frick does it start itself? Well, the cool thing is that you have these, yeah. So yeah, there's also different, uh, actually that's very observant. So notice that the threshold is different between the cells. So the at, what we notice is that at rest, these cells have an overall negative charge, but the threshold values are different, and actually, depending on your textbook and resource, 
this peak voltage right here for the memory potential, it varies. So what I, what I want you more to focus on is that you have to reach this threshold and then you have an action potential. Maybe more advanced classes might be more on the values and specifics. But for this class, or actually for fill 142, focus less on these millivolts. No more like, okay, they're overall negative. It's definitely not zero membrane potential. Like these cells at rest start at negative. And then they have, a, during the action potential, they reach the positive, then come back to negative. All right, back to our pacemaker cells. So what we have here, there's something called these funny currents, and these are special sodium channels that allow sodium ions to slowly leak in. Now, given our very basic definition of to the point of being borderline inaccurate, so what would happen to the membrane potential inside the cell if you have sodium ions le slowly leaking in? So this is start, and what happens to the inside of the cell? Did the inside of the cell get more positive or did it get more negative? Let's ask the chat. Did it get more positive or in negative inside the cell? Yeah, it gets more positive. So that's the cool thing. It's like it starts to push it more slowly toward the positive side. Now, I don't think this is in the OpenStax version, but there is something else called the slower calcium channel or T-type. I won't test you on the T-type. That's like advanced borderline grad med student level but once it reaches this slightly positive or like going toward the positive side then it starts to open another type of channel now calcium is flowing in and again why it's going from high concentrations to low concentrations with calcium coming in oh my god scam calls okay all right so then with calcium coming in is the cell getting more positive or negative yep it's gonna get more positive yeah, so now you have sodium and calcium flowing in through these two channels. That's going to push the membrane potential more and more and more and more positive until it reaches the threshold. So yes, it gets more positive. So this is what allows a pacemaker cell to reach its, to reach its threshold. This prepotential, these channels, they're always open to some extent. So you always have sodium leaking in to some extent. This is what allows these pacemaker cells to reach its threshold and by itself. Now what happens after here? Now we get to that action potential. So it reaches that threshold and now it's going to open a different type of calcium channel. Now do I want you to know T versus L type? If you're going on to advanced classes it might be worth your while, but what I want you to know is that this channel that opens here is a calcium channel. So when you open this calcium channel, now it's a fast type, so it's going to happen at a faster rate. So what's going to happen is it's still going to move the same direction. Calcium is has a plus two charge in the, its ionic form, so it's going to make the inside of the cell very positive. So what happens? Membrane potential shoots up. And notice that it spikes because why? It's happening in a shorter period of time. This is why it's fast. Again, this is why I put quote unquote. It's not an exact term, but it's more like telling you compared to this channel right here, which was climbed slowly positive over a longer period of time, you have a big jump toward the positive side in a short period of time. So once the membrane potential inside a pacemaker cell gets to that very positive membrane potential, that opens another type of channel. So it's going to open up a potassium channel. And remember, in a cell at rest, you have more potassium on the inside than on the outside. So if you open these pota potassium channels, what's going to happen? Potassium leaves the cell. Now let's ask the chat. When potassium is leaving the cell, what will happen to the memory potential? Will it get more positive, negative, or no change? Yep, so just the opposite, right? Because it's going the opposite direction. So this is like, I like to use an analogy like, Okay, I got my paycheck, then I have to pay my rent. So paycheck comes into my bank account, it gets more positive. Then I pay my rent, and then everything goes back to the negative. <laughs> so that, I know it might be like, it's, I wish it wasn't that way, but yeah. So that's what happens here. You have all this positive charge leaving your cells. Yeah, tax returns too. 
and then things go toward the negative. So this is what happens with this repolarization. It goes back toward the negative, but now you have that slight trickle from that funny sodium channels and current, the slow so calcium channels is going to bring you back to threshold. So I actually like to use this as another analogy. I know some of you, now don't feel bad if you don't get it the first time. I think the first time I learned about these, I didn't get it during the lecture. I had to go home and study for a while and look at the book. It is one of the speed bumps in both semesters learning about action potentials. But why am I showing this? So this is, if you've ever seen this cold kind of Japanese fountain, it fills up with water, then it fills up with enough water that it tips over and makes that little cool little bonk sound. So what I'm using here is like, this is how your cells, your pacemaker cells reach threshold. It always has a slight trickle of positive charge coming in. And once it fills to a certain point, it's going to do an action. It's going to do an action potential. Or if you play Animal Crossing, I think they call it deer scares. But yeah, what happens, if you've seen these fountains, they fill up, they tip over, and they start off where they start again. And it's a rhythmic sort of filling and then movement, filling and movement, filling and movement. So this is how your pacemaker cells, not only can they initiate their own electrical activity, this is how they maintain the rhythm. It's due to that prepotential. That's why it's very important to know that, that, that term and how it happens. This is how your pacemaker cells are able to initiate the conduction system while also keeping a rhythm and beat. 